I'm going to be talking about 9-11 today um, and the trillions in carbon trading profits. Was it a sub-motive for the 9-11 attacks? Was it a major part in the 9-11 attacks? I think so. Um, new revelations that Obama created a company, the Climate Chicago Climate Exchange, CCX, uh, just before the 9-11 attacks. And from what we can see, jet impacts were targeted to Hunter Fitzgerald and two other carbon trading futures companies who had uh, created their own software and they were basically at war with each other within the towers to um, gain control of the monopoly of the uh, cap and trade system in North America which is now called carbon trading where companies they they buy a certain amount of the cap and trade credits back in sort of 99, 2000, 2001. This was seen as a massive multi-trillion dollar um, futures that was coming and you know they had to control this. Uh, the jet hit World Trade Tower 2 and it impacted the Fuji Bank cutting off safe exit for employees at Aon and the other one was hit directly into Marsha McLennan which Cut a safe exit off for the Cantor Fitzgerald staff. Um, the uncanny precision suggests both jets operated more like missiles than commercial jets steered by Saudi hijackers who could barely fly. You know? In 2000, Barack Obama was on the board of the Joyce Foundation, connected with Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management. The objective was to develop a carbon trading software program that could compete with software patented by Cantor Fitzgerald and Aon's CO2E. By 2001, Obama was instrumental in funding the Chicago Climate Exchange, known as CCX. After 9-11, CCX stood alone as the only remaining carbon trading company capable of computing the cap and trade system in North America from 2002 to 2010. We're probably talking between four and five trillion dollars were made just in this market alone. Um, there's new markets always emerging. CCX doesn't exist anymore, but it's just an interesting point for a raise about the Aon and Cantor Fitzgerald carbon trading futures wars that was going on within the towers. Um, another reason why the towers collapsing was a, a good thing for certain people as it got rid of many paperless contracts, uh, the trillions in fraud and laundering moments before, during and after it, the attacks uh, it was, you know, disappeared. Um, the major carbon trading futures war which was going on between the various companies, Cancer, Fitzgerald, Aon, um, which were all sort of subsidiaries of Kroll Inc, was 44% of all the people who died and worked for these three companies on 9-11. So it's definitely something you should have a look into. Now the second point that I wanted to uh, go into was the major real estate and insurance fraud, mainly done by Larry Silverstein. But there was a number of people, actually 25 companies, which gained uh, parts of money through insurance. Huge majority of the World Trade Town Towers were empty, they were condemned with asbestos, unsafe, and they were not making any money anymore. So there was there was many floors that were just empty, uh, many plans to do things that never happened. Other companies were losing money, so it would have cost an estimated 15 billion to safely put up scaffolding, dismantle, take down the towers, and then rebuild it into a more profitable thing. 15 billion is a lot of money. Larry Silverstein bought the lease for a 99 years, two years before, um, and the paperwork was actually going on. Uh, the finalization was going on during September of 2001, and he managed to insure uh, the towers with a down payment of 165 million. Uh, his company only paid 15 million of that. 
uh, they tried to claim 7.7 .7 billion claiming it was two separate terrorist attacks but eventually he got paid 4.5 billion uh, for the trade towers, 500 billion for building seven and he had the rights to rebuild the new Freedom Tower which obviously was major real estate fraud he knew uh, something big was coming on so he insured those towers and he made sure it was worth his while uh, it, was, it was a two or three year court case many protests against it why should he and they gain this money when lots of people have lost their lives and the simple fact that on the morning of 9-11 he said we've pulled it we've pulled it live on TV going into the third thing that I wanted to talk about was the gold and silver heist that happened possibly one of the biggest gold and silver heists in history no one talks about it it's estimated that the Saudi Arabian and Kuwaiti governments and other Middle Eastern private investors had over 2 billion worth of gold and silver bullion and a further 1 billion in gold and silver bullion was stored in bank vaults underneath and around the trade centre. The COMEX metal trading, 3,800 gold bars weighing 12 tonnes and worth more than 100 million. COMEX clients, 800,000 ounces of gold with a value of almost 220 million. COMEX clients, 102 million ounces of silver worth 430 million. Bank of Nova Scotia, 200 millions worth of gold. These all just disappeared. We believe that they were taken under uh, the train tracks, uh, the Pace train station is what it's called. Uh, it's been totally rebuilt now. A lot of it was destroyed in the bank. Uh, the bath tap, what they call it, is where the World Trade Center towers used to sit in was a, a massive uh, foundation called the bath. So involved, financed or financially gained from the 9-11 attacks, AIG, they were the insurer of the World Trade Center complex, also trillions in fraud and laundering moments before, during and after the attacks. Aon, trillions in carbon futures before, during and after the attacks. The Blackstone Group controlled the mortgage of the World Trade Center site. CIA, NSA and the DOD, uh, lots of intelligence operations that were going on before and after and during the attacks, trying to uh, get hold of lots of data from Building 7, which housed the NSA, CIA and DOD intelligence. Also Convar GM, bought by Kroll, the technology data and evidence recovery of the World Trade Center complex and they basically covered up all the fraud along with the CIA and the NSA and the DOD. Cantor Fitzgerald, trillions in carbon futures before, during and after the attacks, many of their staff died. COMEX, security for the vault for gold, silver and currencies and metals of the World Trade Center complex. Daro, they were in charge of the air defense reconnaissance system on the day. DARPA, it's believed that they created the direct energy weapons used in the attacks which I will go on later on in the show about molecular disassociation. Echelon, which is a worldwide intelligence system, uh, they, were, they played a big role that day. FEMA, they helped cover up the evidence and remove people from certain areas of the complex before, during and after the attacks. Goldman Sachs, they were a major financier and lender to purchase the World Trade Center complex. Hugo New recycled and managed the debris from the World Trade Center complex. They got rid of everything, I think it was seven weeks, managed to get rid of the whole, all of the metal and uh, dust that was there very quick. Kroll, owned by AIG, they were the security for the World Trade Center complex. They did risk assessment and they were a major financier as well. You also have Incutel and NIST who were involved in the technology on the day. There is also SPC, ICTS who were in charge of the planes which is 
controlled by the Bush family, funnily enough. Also had Halliburton and Batchel who got contracts for war after the Homeland Security Act was secured. We then have International Turner, Morrison, Nilsson, Washington, Group International, Amec, Bovis and a number of other demolitions companies that were involved. We also have companies such as Marsh and McLennan, the BBC, CNN, ExxonMobil, Shell and all the other oil companies who gained lots of powers after the Iraq war was declared. QAM in charge of the technology for free airports hijacked uh, planes flew from. ICTS International they controlled security for the free airports hijacked planes flew from. Marsha McLennan world's largest brokerage firm back then trillions in fraud and laundering moments before and during the attacks. The main hub for all the fraudulent activity was going on there. The first plane killed almost everyone and destroyed the control rooms, evidence, paperless contracts, hard drives, computers, everything was destroyed in the Marsha McLennan um, floors. NORAD, they controlled the US airspace security but was hijacked on that day, funnily enough. Uh, New York Port Authority, they ran the World Trade Center complex. Northrop Gonham, uh, they were involved with DARPA in creating electronic warfare systems. The Pentagon, they were the intelligence that controls the US Army and the Air Force. Raytheon, they were involved with Northrop Grumman and DARPA. Silverstein Properties, which is Larry Silverstein, who part owned the 99 year lease on the World Trade Center complex, was paid 4.5 billion after the attacks. Silverstream, they built many scandalous trading applications for many banks before and around the time of the attacks, working alongside Marsh and McLennan and Cantor Fitzgerald. Str Strarasek in charge of the security for hijacked airlines used and security for main parts of the World Trade Center complex, funnily enough. The Sims Group, they cleaned all the metal from the World Trade Center complex and delivered to the Hugo New facilities in New Jersey and upstate New York, which was then melted down quickly, got rid of. Westfield America Inc. They part owned the 99 year lease on the World Trade Center complex and the retail section and they were also a major financier in everything that has gone on. So it was a, a problem a reaction solution. Many organizations were set up before and then after things like the Homeland Security which gave even more power, wealth and resources from the people to the federal governments and corporations of the world which moved on 19 years later you can see how many privileges and rights have been taken away because of 9-11 and the terrorist attacks and the many terrorist attacks that have happened since then nowhere near as big as 9-11 the last bit we're just going into molecular disassociation you'll see how 250,000 cubic yards of concrete and hundreds of tons of steel just turns to dust and free falls it's quite remarkable Explosion. 
explosion and what appears to be a complete collapse surrounding the entire area. Thank <laughs> you.